Hey guys, we are here with another video for Artsy Trio. This month, the mood board was created by me, myself, and I. <laughs> um, so this is this month's mood board. If you'd like a copy of it and um, you want to follow along um, using mood boards and color inspiration in your work once a month, um, join us in the Artsy Trio Facebook group. Um, the link is down in the video description. Uh, this is this month's uh, mood board. I'm very much inspired by nature, as I almost always am, um, especially right now. I have been doing lots of abstract work. And um, again, we are going to try something that I normally do um, on watercolor paper with watercolor paints. In fact, I'll show you one right here that I did not long ago. And it's a very simple um, expressive technique. I really love the technique. I'm gonna see if we can do it, <laughs> big if, with water-soluble crayons. I know not all of you have watercolor paints. Um, theoretically, this should be possible with any water-soluble medium. Um, as long as you work fairly quickly. With watercolor paints, even if they dry, you can still reactivate them with water. Not all water-soluble mediums are like that. Um, so, especially these Neocolor crayons. So we are going to uh, work with the crayons. If you have water-soluble inks, watercolor paints, of course, gouache. You could do this with gouache paints, although they're not as transparent as the watercolor. They should still work. You might get something very interesting. Um, and again, as I said, I'm usually inspired by nature. So I have taped off a frame on my page. I'm hoping for some clean lines. I usually fail at that tremendously, but we're gonna see. I'm gonna put my mood board over to the side over here and we will later make notes on this side. I am gonna work on the white sheet of paper because I really want the colors to show up and this is watercolor paper. <sighs> okay, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I have water and a large brush, which I do. Um, again, we're gonna work fairly quickly. I have picked out some Neocolor crayons that go along with the mood board. I don't have a lot of these anymore because honestly, they're not my favorite, but I have ochre, um, spring green, um, Sahara yellow, jade green, orange, and raspberry red. So we are going to, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna turn this a little bit this way. <clears throat> really quickly, we're not gonna try to draw anything specific. We're gonna just try to go where the feelings or inspiration may take us. You're not trying to draw a solid line. Open space is fine. When I do this with water watercolor paint, I don't even use a traditional paintbrush. I use some kind of a roller or a vegetable peeler or the edge of a credit card or something. Um, these are crayons, so we're gonna use what we have. When we get the water on there, I do have some unusual things like this makeup spoolie, I've got a Q-tip. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna play. All right, let's get started, shall we? Because I'm boring myself. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one and I'm going to just, And quickly, because I don't want these to dry too much. Okay. And then go with my brush. Now again, these probably won't blend and drip the way the watercolor paints were will because they're not watercolor paints there. And see, I already got some. I already got a smudge. You guys, I'm not great at getting clean edges. Here we go. Okay. Now we'll do the top. And let the paints blend and puddle. Um, If you get too much water or you feel like you haven't left enough white space, get in there with a paper towel. Have one handy before you get started. You can go back in with one of the colors 
and you can actually, with the crayons, you can actually dip it in water. I'm trying to create something that gives me an inspiration or feeling of an image or nature. I'm not trying to create a specific item. That's not what I do. I try to stick very abstract these days. This works. It doesn't work like the watercolor, but it works. Okay. I do have a few of these. These are, I think, kind of, I have barely used them. I do have this too. What is this? I have a gelato. I didn't even know I had. It's called Snow Cone. I think I got it free from the vendor at a trade show. What does that do? Mm -hmm. No idea. Let's see. Let's try it. Again, sop up some of that extra if you think you get too much. I kind of like this color. All right, what do I have in here that will work with the mood board. I have an orange, but it might be too orange and a yellow. Let's try them anyways. Uh, these are what these are hard watercolor sticks. These are Daniel Smith. These these are gonna pool and puddle in. They're not the same as regular watercolor paints, but they're closer than the neocolors. Okay. I'm going to come in here with my spoolie. Try to move some pigment around. Scrub at it a little bit because you have these sort of waxy crayons on the surface of your paper. You have to work at it a little harder, in my opinion. Okay, I think I want some more green on there, and I don't think we have enough. Sort of a little light green. going to dry that and then I'll be right back. Okay, now I have a smallish paint brush and I'm going to go in with some navy blue cuz I'm just not feeling going in with black. So, I'm going to go in with a dark blue. And this is acrylic gouache, so this is not water not as water soluble as the um, crayons and stuff. So with a very light touch, don't dig any holes to China on your page, just very lightly flick the brush up. If you feel like you need to make that darker, you can always add a little bit of black later with paint or pen. I have two shades of green. I have a pale mint and a cobalt green. Get them both open here. Maybe. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna see if there's actually enough paint in the lids to do what I want. I'm going to take our little spoolie brush again 
I'm going to dip it in the dark green and then in the light green so I have both colors on the end of the spoolie. And again, this is just a, a makeup a makeup thing. You can get these, of course, on Amazon, Dollar Tree. Like you can get them a lot of places. I can tell you right now, looking at this, we are going to need to add some black to the those stripes that we did. Oops, it's a good thing I'm going to need a lot of that. Just keep tapping, just keep tapping. You can use the tip of this brush, you can use the side of this brush. As you can see, and we'll see if we can zoom in right about here, it leaves interesting marks on the page. And one of the things about doing these abstracts that I'm having a lot of joy discovering is using some of these unusual tools and finding out what kind of marks I can make with which tools. I am gonna rinse it off just a little bit. Now when you do do these, you want to, okay, we're at, it's abstract. You want to suggest a feeling, a mood um, that's inspired by whatever image or um, real life scene that's inspiring you to create this in the first place. Um, but you also want to be aware of light and dark and shadow and contrast because that's going to help you make it look more interesting. And in that vein, I think we need to go back to the, well, we need to go to the black. I'm gonna use, this is a Q, obviously, this is a Q-tip. This is the navy blue. And there are some dark colors in the mood board, you know, in the backgrounds of some of the flowers and stuff. So this isn't totally out of left field to use these colors. little brush with just some water before that acrylic paint dries again if you're using watercolor paint you don't have to worry about moving so quickly because the paint just will reactivate and it's not a problem but once the acrylic paint is dry and even though this is a gouache this is an acrylic gouache so once it's dry that's all she wrote I don't understand <laughs> I didn't start out doing this, but that does look like trees by a pond to me. What about you guys? I, that wasn't what I was shooting for. <laughs> but yeah. So really simple, really quick, really easy. All right, let's take that pit tape off. See how well we did with our edges.
There you go. What do you think? I like it. All right, I'm gonna make some notes on the other side and I'll be back. Okay, how cool is that? Of course, I made notes on the other side of the page because the page is black. We used a white gel pen, but that way I can remember maybe what I did. But it's a really easy technique that you get really good, fun, interesting results from. I'd love to see you guys try it, and I would love to see what you do with it in your journals or on a piece of watercolor paper. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that one. Anyway, go watch my co-teachers' videos, Mike Deacon and Bea Grob. Their links are down in the video description. Show them some love, like, share, and subscribe. Questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I answer all my YouTube comments. You can also tag me in posts if you do join the Facebook group and you create a page from my mood board. Tag me in the post because I'd love to see what you do. I do try to engage as often as possible. Wow, okay, and if you want to support the free content here on YouTube, please join my Patreon. I have lots of content over there for them. Mike Deacon and Bea Grob also have ways that you can support them, so please do, and above do all, something nice for yourself, because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.